I don't know about you guys, but I love a good protagonist. You know, someone who isn't afraid to swoop in and save the day, an unwavering moral compass. But, you know, even the greatest of protagonists, after a while, can get a little bit boring. Come on, let's face it, even the greatest of good guys can lack that little bit of spice, that little bit of kick, that hidden ingredient that turns them from just your average boy scout into layered, complex and unpredictable. And that's why we have the anti-hero. Anti... Anti... I'll just use a mixture of both. That one character who isn't afraid to get their hands dirty, isn't afraid to operate outside of the law, to use unconventional methods to get the job done. And come on, as long as it has the desired effect, are we really that bothered about the body count? So this has got me thinking, right? TV is littered with anti-heroes. I mean, we have the likes of Jax Teller, Ray Donovan, pretty much every single character in Game of Thrones. I mean, there's loads of them. But who are the top five biggest badasses? Who are the top five TV anti-heroes? So I compiled this list, and hopefully we can determine who is the biggest and baddest of them all. So quick disclaimer for you guys, I'm basing this list on TV as a whole, which includes characters from series that have long finished, way before the time of Netflix. So don't be surprised if, you know, there are a few people I leave off this list, because this is one hell of a challenge. To narrow it down to five is pretty much insane, given the amount of anti-heroes we've had on television in the past 20 years. Having said all that, I think some of you guys out there would be quite surprised on how some of our modern day badasses aren't even a patch on some of our OG original anti-heroes. But enough chin wagging. Let's dive on in to what is my top five list of TV anti-heroes. Check it out. I know, I know. I really, I really shouldn't like this guy. I really shouldn't. But for some reason, I find the character of Theodore Bagwell, AKA Teabag from Prison Break, absolutely fascinating. I don't know, maybe it's me. Maybe it's something to do with my backwards childhood or I have some sort of weird obsession surrounding, you know, pedophile, rapey, murderous men. But I actually find it difficult not to find this guy extremely fascinating. If you've watched the show, then you know that he's a very, very, very bad man and a horrible example of a human being. But ironically, I think the best thing about the entire series. He's dangerous, he's dirty, he's creepy, but creepy in a charismatic, enjoyable kind of way. If that's even possible. It is possible. If you've seen the show, then you know exactly what I mean. But the reason Teabag makes this list of anti-heroes, though not the perfect example of an anti-hero, is because there are times during the series that he does stick his neck out for the team and he does serve the greater good albeit pushed by personal and selfish motivations, but still, and in my humble opinion, if the viewer is having some sort of internal moral conflict as to whether or not they should actually like this character, then that's exceptional writing. And technically, when you think about it, does make him a really good example of an anti-hero. Ah, Frank Castle. You see, Frank Castle, aka The Punisher, is definitely classed as an anti-hero in the comic books, has been for years, but how does he fare in the TV world? Well, pretty much the same. A bit broody, a tad broken, a little bloody. Yeah, he hasn't changed much. And that's a good thing, because toning down Frank Castle, probably not the best move. It's pretty much the core identity of the character, the whole anti-hero thing. And given the stuff this guy's been through, I mean, can you really blame him? The brutal execution of his family, the betrayal of, you know, pretty much anyone he's come into contact with, that's, that's gonna send a guy a little bit loopy. And rightly so, because loopy is how we like our Frank Castle. Loopy is good. But it isn't his loopiness that makes him so captivating. No, what makes him so captivating is his sheer brutality. This guy does not give a single 
I mean, this guy has lost everything, so that kind of makes him the worst kind of man there is. The type of man with nothing else left to lose. And once you're at that stage, well, people better be running in the opposite direction very fast. That's right, ladies and gentlemen, number three on my list, Heisenberg himself, Mr. Walter White. Now, Walter White is a perfect example of an anti-hero. A very normal, very desperate man with good intentions just suddenly hit by tragic and overwhelming circumstances. A man blessed with incredible intelligence and a then clean soul decides to trade it all in for the idea of grandeur and legacy. It's an age-old story, the rise and the fall, and that's what I love the most about Breaking Bad. It's a case study of the anti-hero. They take a very humble, very good man, and they place him in a very real, very tragic scenario. And they let you sit back and watch as he transforms into this horrible, grotesque piece of shit. And though we're right there, right next to him, witnessing the transformation, we still root for him every step of the way. And it gets me every single time I watch the show. Even now, I sit there and I go, why am I supporting this guy? Why do I want him to win? I'll tell you why. Not everybody loves a villain, but everybody loves a hero turned villain. And that's what Walter White is. Walter White is a poster boy for a good man turned bad, hence Breaking Bad. A cautionary tale of an exceptional man crushed by the weight of his own crown. Have some of that, Shakespeare. Have some of that. My number two, the red-headed raven of death, Dexter Morgan. I fell in love with this character within the first 10 seconds of the pilot episode. He is the definition of hypnotizing. I couldn't keep my eyes off the screen. He's cool, he's calculated, he's dark and twisted. Dexter Morgan is an anti-hero you just can't help but fall in love with. And his motivations are understandable. As crazy as that sounds, there is an argument to be made that Dexter Morgan is closer to a hero than an anti-hero. Okay, let me back up and put some weight behind that statement because that's a pretty crazy thing to say, but think of it this way. Dexter Morgan only kills people who deserve to be killed. In fact, I challenge you guys, pause this video, go back and watch the entire series and see if you can find one person Dexter takes out who doesn't deserve to die. Go on, press pause. I'll wait for you right here. Go on. Okay, so you were never going to go sit down and watch every single episode of Dexter just so I can prove my point. But you got to see where I'm coming from. He takes out the trash. Now, the only thing that makes him more of the anti in anti-hero is the fact that he kills people, which we all know is morally wrong. And through doing that actually makes him no better than the people he kills. I mean, aside from that, it's quite difficult to persecute him. I mean, who wouldn't want to sack their own kind of justice on a serial killing, child molesting face? Dexter Morgan makes it on this anti-heroes list simply because of those bloody pesky rules that govern the fact that we're not allowed to kill people, even if they deserve it. Otherwise, I'm pretty sure this guy would be included on my top five heroes list because he's a legend. My number one pick goes to my favorite anti-hero of all time. The head of the family, the Don himself, Tony Soprano. Easily the most likable anti-hero on this list. A troubled, broken family man, mob boss, an all-round total badass. Tony Soprano is a dangerously relatable character. He has relationship issues, family dilemmas, nervous breakdowns, anxiety problems, power struggles, trust issues. This guy is as normal as it gets, minus being the head of the biggest crime family in New Jersey. 
This guy is just a normal guy trying to hold things together as well as juggle some of the personal issues that he keeps buried deep inside. But despite how normal he appears, despite how likable he is, Tony Soprano is a terrible person. He's a ruthless, cheating, murderous, addiction-driven gangster with a complete disregard for the sanctity of life. He wouldn't think twice about wiping out anyone or anything that stood in his way. He's psychopathic, sociopathic, narcissistic. This guy is just no good. Having said that, this character does have an incredible list of redeeming features. Features so redeeming that you tend to forget that this guy is a terrible, diabolical example of a role model. And really, probably the most evil person on this entire list. Minus maybe Teabag, but he's close. Despite the huge body count Tony Soprano has racked up, you can't help but just fall in love with the guy. His charm, his swagger, his honesty, his integrity, his drive, his power, his masculinity, the list goes on. Tony Soprano does have a lot of redeeming features and shows many examples of having a pure and kind heart. But ultimately, it's not enough to balance the scales, which is why I'm placing Tony Soprano as my number one anti-hero. Yes, he's done some evil things, but also when it comes to his family and his close friends, you couldn't ask for a better person. Backwards, isn't it? There you have it, guys. Some of those you probably saw coming and some of those were maybe, to you, a little bit unconventional. But more so than any list I've ever done, I'm really interested to find out what you guys think. Hit the comment section below and put in your top five TV anti-heroes. There are so many, this was a really difficult list, but also, in a weird way, pretty exciting. And as always, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much. You've been awesome. Feel free to like and subscribe and hit that old bell notification down there so you can keep up to date with all of my video releases. And please, I ain't joking, write down your list in the comment section below. I'd be really, really intrigued to see who you have on your list. Thank you once again for joining me. I'm Dane Gumas. This was a top five Westlife.